We're all back from the Christmas New Year's break and the boys are hard at work back on our welded hull Grant and Stug 3G. But as we build up a bit of footage for the next Workshop Wednesday episode, we thought we would share with you some of the process that Al and Jono went through restoring the Steyr 1500A. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. What we have here is a Steyr, World War II German Steyr uh, utility vehicle. I think it was command car, just general transport, things like that. What sort of nicks it in? It's not too bad. Someone's already started a bit of a restoration on it. We had the motor running the other day, so it should all be good. Al will work his magic on it and uh, see us in two months' time. Oh, I'll just pull it all out first and have a work on it. Get it sitting on the chasing first. It's cockeyed. I think there's only bolts in the front, nothing at the back. So we need to straighten that up and then work from the front cord. Yeah, With the Steyr in the workshop, Al first assembled everything to find out what we had and if there were any parts missing. Then, he had to grind back the existing paint that was peeling off and reprime it. When you put paint on, it's got a smooth surface. So when you go put another coat on, sometimes it doesn't stick. So you just, just knock it off with a bit of 320 just to give it a little bit of roughness. I reckon that's what's happened before. They've put that other paint over the paint under without rubbing it. That's why it starts to peel off. Yeah, so hoping this will lock it all in. After a coat of Dunkelgelb, it was time to reassemble the panels. <laughs> I won't tighten him up just yet, I'll leave them all loose. We'll get the grill on. We'll get the other one on first.
Is that a little wood rough key? Yeah. 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 See, I've learned so much. <laughs> Jesse was doing some messy work on the Grand Tank this day, so we had to push the sty out of harm's way. I've got the emergency brake. It doesn't matter if it goes over in the corner, it doesn't have to go perfectly in. Yeah, they're going pretty easy. There's the front, yep. When I first saw this vehicle and how much timber there was in it, I was really surprised. Timber is not something you usually see in the structure of a truck. Get the big pair of Monday off the line, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we got the fuel tank overhauled and fitted. Al was really on the home stretch at this point. The next step was the bonnet. That was quite. Slave it like that. Yeah. 
give it the open end up. Yep. Yep. The little vents. There's a big opening in the side. Is that has that got a mesh on it? Hey, yeah, yeah. It's a mesh panel? Yeah, yeah. Got to make it Yep, I've got to cut them in, yeah. Beautiful yeah. picture. We also had new Perspex windshields made. Could be okay. Could be okay. Yeah. We're practiced at this, aren't we? Yeah. We are. <laughs> You're in there, Darrell. Yep. Just push it up. Come on, hell, you're holding the bloody team up, mate. Oh, my God. What you saying, that is 75, mate. I'll get the... <laughs> Yeah. My wife Katarina said she wanted a new car this year, so what do you reckon she'd say if she found this in the driveway? It was time to fire it up and check the brakes and steering, and if it actually drove. actually found we would need to install a little fuel pump, so Ryan and Bo rig up a small outboard fuel tank just to get it across the road. Everyone stand clear. <laughs> I don't know what, we don't know what's going to happen. You, your wheels are straight. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Here we go. Okay. process took from October 7th to December 15th and that's Al only coming in three days a week. We'll finish off the video with Museum Assistant Manager Jason Belgrave giving us some info about our newest exhibit. This is the Steyr 1500A. So the Steyr itself uh, come out in two different models. So we have the A plus we have the 01 which this vehicle is and the way that we can tell that is because of the wheel uh, that is mounted externally here. So the original model had the tyre located in the back. So the Steyr started production in about September of 1941 uh, in Austria, where they built probably about two thirds of the, uh, the volume of the, the vehicles that come out, and the rest of them were made in Germany itself. So there was about 18,050 of both models that were uh, produced by Germany right up until about March of 1944. This has a 85 horsepower V8 petrol engine. So this could propel it on road at about 90 kilometres an hour. Uh, has a 100 litre uh, fuel tank which is located under the bonnet 
just in this location here, and we fill it up from the, uh, the passenger side. So this is all-wheel drive, four-speed manual. It has a, a sort of a fording distance of about 70 centimetres, so it was quite good in going through water. The whole vehicle was about two and a half ton, but this had a 1.6 ton payload. So within the, the specifications of the vehicle itself, we can use it as a utility truck, so we're just carrying stores. We can carry 10 people in the back, so we can use it as infantry transport, uh, or they were also used as staff cars. Some were later re-rolled to ambulances and other uh, vehicles as required for uh, their operational requirements. With the colour scheme, so we wanted North Africa, but when we look at the styres being in North Africa, We've actually had one comment from one of the viewers say there was only about six styres in North Africa, really? which limited its use to either one or two units. The British used the Scorpion for their long-range desert group. We had Ramke's Fallschirmjäger unit securing an Italian airfield. The long-range desert group come through one night, decided to uh, pay him a visit. The Fallschirmjäger unit that were there apparently gave the long-range desert group a bit of a touch-up. They thought they destroyed the unit, so they grabbed the Scorpion as their uh, emblem. So this is part of uh, Sonda Commando Dora. This is a geoscientific reconnaissance unit in North Africa. These guys are the ones who did mapping and weather and all that sort of stuff as well. So these are for your uh, infantry rifles, so your K98, your Mauser's. Uh, so they generally had brackets e either side plus in the front. So this is where your weapons would be stored whilst in transit. We also have this one here, the MG34. Uh, uh, in its mount. Now when we're traveling we can lock this in its mount as such so it won't move or we want to bring it into use we can bring it up and we can also raise it up. So now we can go into a, an anti-aircraft roll if we need to or to get that height depending on where we're shooting over the vehicle itself. The towing pintle uh, can also tow the uh, Pac-36 and Pac-40 anti-tank guns as well. So there you have it. Not as hot and heavy as some of the bigger vehicle restorations, but nonetheless, Al worked really hard on this and he did a fantastic job. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one.